All right, so today I'm going to go over a uh, basic walk cycle. First thing I really sort of want to do is set up my scene. I'm going to add a geometry at the bottom so that when I look at it from the side view, there's something under my feet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. You can you know, decide to add it to the objects, whichever. So you don't have to select it. Uh, so that's what I did. And if you want, you can actually add a reference in the background uh, or have your reference separately. Either or it's fine. But I'm just going to show you the basics on how to make a, a walk cycle. Now, this walk cycle will be able to do two things it will be able to cycle in place and you'll be able to move it so it can actually walk across the screen if you desire. So first things first, I want to get my, my, my animation to about well, what's going on here? Uh, 40. So I do 40, it's gonna probably be a little bit of a slower walk, but uh, I shouldn't do it. So first thing you always want to do, you want to make your contact pose you're in your passing pose. You can, you know, basically live off of those two things, and then you want to make your uh, your other poses as as you as you go. I want to basically do this very um, sort of by the book, step by step. First thing I want to do is set a key on all my keys. So in frame zero, I'm gonna go ahead and make my contact pose. Oops. Several ways of doing this. I like to use the, the, the foot control for, for practically everything and just adjust the toe control as, as I go. I got to be careful with my rotation because this. Rig is not the best at rotation, so I want to st try to stay away from rotating on different axes. I'm going to use you just rotate on the Y. Probably bring it down just a bit to my feet. Just my toe. There's no toe there. Not toe twist, but. So, in, in my side view, my animation sort of looks like this. Alright, so that's my first pose. Make sure I set a key there. And I want to go ahead and set a key at 40, because that's the pose that's going to end in order to, uh, to cycle properly. So, at frame uh, 20, I'm just going to go ahead and drop that same key, or that same pose right there as well. But that frame 20 is basically going to be reversed. What I'm going to do with the reverse, I want to basically use the negative 26. I'm just going to go ahead and just type in 26. And all I'm doing is just equaling the amount of uh, waist rotation right here so that the feet are somewhat, in general, the same area. And I'm just going to now go ahead and Push the, this foot up front. Basically, work on the other pose. Do the best I can to match it up. There's other ways you can do this. You can match it up by uh, not being too strict on it right now, but you can match it up oops, by putting locators down or you know, various other ways to. I just eyeball 90% of everything. You can also use the grid and there and other views to sort of see where your, your foot laid at last. I don't have other methods to sort of correct that as I go. My toe. All right, so now I actually got frame zero, got my contact pose. Frame 20, I got my other contact pose. 
and it's just basically reversing it. Now what I want to do in between frame 0 and 20, I want to make my, uh, at frame 10, make a passing pose. And for the passing pose, I was going to go ahead and put the leading foot, basically zero everything out, and it's going to sort of stay right underneath the character, which is pretty much where you want it to be. I want to move this, this, uh, the other foot, sort of the same direction, but at the same position under right underneath the, the character, and this would be the passing pose. And you have to adjust your feet accordingly. This guy got some big feet, some long feet, so it's gonna have it up there. And also during the passing pose, the body actually pushes up. So you want to have this up as about as high as you can get it without locking out that knee. And also rotate it probably on the Y to you can zero it out if you want to just to keep it even. So now you got frame zero, frame ten, frame twenty. Now you may think, all right, because right now I'm just dropping down poses, so I'm, I'm sort of skipping the, the blocking stage and all that stuff. But this is just to basically show how you're going to sort of plan out your shot. Or, I mean, skipping the stage. This is the blocking stage, basically, your blocking stage. And so, what I want to do at frame 30 is basically have this pose, but just the opposite. So, I'm just going to uh, go to frame 30 and just do the same thing there. One thing I did forget to mention is your knee look at. You can go ahead and place those like from the get beginning, just throw them out way out in front so you don't have to deal with them. But make sure you select everything. So on frame 10, I gotta make sure I select put a key on all my controllers. Frame 20, frame 30. Make sure I just do the same right before I start this one. So same thing. I'm gonna zero all this out. This foot. Oops, not that. So zero. Not place twenty one. Yeah. Oh, it's not like zero. There we go. And then for this foot, so I'm gonna move it up. Bring it up a little high. Get this toe. Thermal rotation is zero. Y. And then now you got your, your other passing pose. And it's in between frame 20 and 40. You know, do the math, 30. So now if I just press play, I got all my uh, my basic poses in. Oops. But on frame 30, I'm going to bring up the height. I'm going to bring up the same that I have on frame 10, which ain't much, but. It is what it is. I'm just going to copy that right over. Paste it. Or you can middle mouse. Paste it through the same thing. But now my character is walking with this, those few keys. So what I have is basically my contact, my passing, another contact, another passing, back to my contact, that frame 40. And this makes your generic loop start. So now, obviously, you want to move on to sort of get to the, then basically add even more poses to your walk. If you utilize your reference, you'll see that there's more than just the, the contact than the passing. Like you probably want to have something in between your contacts and your passing, vice versa, where you have a, a, the, the sell, sell the walk letter. So what I want to, what I like to do is uh, after my contact and passing. All right, so at frame say five in between the T's, I'm gonna try to keep everything sort of programmatic. You're gonna have your basically your down pose. Uh, make sure I got my yes, I got him selected. I'm gonna go ahead and put the controls on this side. So a down pose basically is when you're you make contact that heel's gonna come down. Put that down. I'm gonna rotate this guy. Completely down. I want to move him just a little bit. Oops. This way, not completely under, but just a, like a step under. And then this guy right here, he's not completely leaving. Uh, his foot's not completely leaving the ground just yet, but his foot's still on the ground. So now you sort of get this kind of look. 
this that would be your down pose. You make sure you set a key on all that as well. Then at frame say 14 or 15 ish, you want to have your up pose where well, this would be the character's basically its highest point before it gets down to uh, the next contact point. So frame 15. I'm gonna pop this up even higher. Enough for the foot sort of starts floating on its own. I'm gonna drag this back just enough. Then I'm gonna rotate it so my foot starts to clip in. Bring it up more. Probably put about right there. Add my toe roll. And for this foot, I'm gonna have it move up just something like that. Not necessarily too high because I want to make him feel like he's marching. And I also at this point, I want to sort of rotate his waist, his hips, to sort of point in the direction of the leading foot. So now I got an up and now it starts to come to us down. So now I added the, the two more poses to my walk cycle. And I got to do the same to the other side. So basically at frame 25, I want to do the same thing I did at, at frame five, but for the opposite. This should be your down pose for this side. So I want to bring this foot and rotate a little bit about right here. Oops. Right there, this foot. Rotate it down. Scoot back. Bring my character down. Grab all the keys. Make sure I set the key. That's one thing you want to do as well. Just make sure to grab all the keys. Set a key. I don't know if I set a key on that one. I'm just going to go back. Be sure. All right. So now we got to throw in the other pose, which will be the up pose. This side. Same thing. I'm going to bring this foot up or forward. We'll take the waist a little bit. Rotate this leg. This will be basically the up pose. I can go back and get the same volume that I had in the other one if you want. Totally up to you. I want to move this toe. It's not clipping. So now I have basically a blocked out walk cycle. So at this point, uh, there's a few more things you want to do before you get your animation out of blocking. One of those things is probably save. There's a walk. Okay, so now let's make this guy move across the screen without having to move everything. So this is where your move all comes into play. All right, so now that we got everything going, you want to click the, the triangle. That's going to be... Your, uh, your move all, you want to press S to set a key on it. You want to go all the way down to 40, make sure you press S there as well. But you want to look at your animation. And this is this is the tricky part. Because basically what we're going to do, we're going to move basically at frame 40, the key or the character all the way to the spot that he, that he needs to end to make a walk cycle. But then blocking, you're obviously not going to get the in-between. So what you need to do is select all the keys on your, your, your controller. Go to frame five. Probably go to the side view if you want. At frame five, select your main your main controller and just set a key. That just keep your idea, at least you know where the next key is. But you know every key is on five, and I believe 10, 15, uh, 20, it's 25, 30, 35, and 40. So at each this what's gonna happen now is to, and in order to make the character move forward properly without his feet sliding, uh, you're going to basically mark where you see the heel of your character right here. There's multiple ways to do it. I usually point my finger there, but I usually put my finger there actually and just uh, make a placeholder. Or you can uh, grab a, a geometry box and put it there just to so you can see where your location is at. But I'm just going to basically, at this point, I'm going to put my finger right there and go to 5. And then what I want to do is I want to select my uh, 
my main con my remote controller, and I want to move the heel to the spot where my foot my finger was at. So now when I go back, it looks like the character is actually moving forward. The reason I'm using the heel is because that's where the, the foot contacts. It makes contact. And basically, the foot makes contact there, and then it's going to move forward. So the next thing I want to do is I want this middle mouse to 10. Make, make sure this just the uh, main control at the bottom. Go to the screen. Just make sure that one's selected. That's it. And press S. So now I'm going to copy that same location I had at 5 at 10. But now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the heel of the character. So I'm going to heel the characters right here. I'm going to make a mental note or I'm going to place my finger there to go to frame 10. And then move the character to move all to that spot. So now it looks like he's even moving again. It's a little off, so I'm gonna keep going until until I get it right. All right. So now if I scrub through, it looks like the character's moving forward even more. Now I'll do the same thing. Frame 15. I'm gonna set a key there. Look at where. Uh, make sure frame 10. Same 15. Frame 10. This is 15. Now it's a little different now because now the uh, my heel actually it, it moves from being heel down to the heel being up. So now I'm just going to switch what I'm using. I'm going to use the toe now of the foot that's down. So at frame 10, I want to put my finger at the tip of the toe, go to frame 15, grab my move all, and I want to move my. Uh, my controller until it gets to frame or until it gets to the, my point, my matching point where my finger's at right now. And it happens to be at that, to that point. So now at frame 15, my character moves to that location. So now it looks like the character's moving in forward even more. So that happens. So now with that, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to copy this controller for frame 15. Keep double clicking. And place it on frame 20. If I can get it to work right there. So now at frame 20, it's this foot. This is the new contact pose. But I'm gonna still use this back foot because it's still on the on the ground and I can judge the distance. So I'm gonna keep my finger there for this back foot. And go to frame 20 and now move the controller to frame or to where my, my locator is at this time. It's at frame 20. So now my character is moving forward. And I gotta do the same thing, I'm gonna do that same process to get the rest. But now on this one, I wanna use the heel for the next one. So for the, for this one, I use the, uh, to make this one work, I use the back toe. Now that the, this contact pose is here on frame 20, I'm gonna go to frame 25. I'm going to match it, put, put my marker here, make sure it's there. And at frame 25, I'm going to move it to match. Keep doing this process. Oops. This process one more time. And basically, I'm gonna keep doing this process to the end. Like this. Oops. I actually use a toe for this one. Just get a toe up. This one barely moves, which is probably a, a, a bad thing on my end. I probably didn't move. Yeah, make this happen enough. So this pose. 
probably could have been adjusted a bit better from the get-go. So now my character in blocking stage can walk across the walk across the screen. It's a little bit of sliding in there. Some of it, just, I need to be more precise in where I'm placing it. So what this is going to do, it's going to do several things. It's going to allow your, you to animate the character, what it looks like moving forward. And also at any time, say, well, you know what? I don't. I want to animate this guy in place. You select that main controller. Go to your translation Z. Right click. Go to a mute selected. So if you mute selected, whatever you muted at, it's going to stay at that position. You can do that with all your controllers, but for this one, it helps tremendously because now you can focus on just animating the character in place in a, in a blocking state. All right, so I saved that out. So this has been 22 minutes on going through the blocking pass on this walk site. For right now, this is what I'll, this is what I'm going to leave you with, and I'm going to continue to do a a spline pass and a polish pass in the next videos, and I'll post those up. But for now, get to this point, and this will help you get to understand how the walk cycle. Let's be the walk cycle blocking. All right, thanks.